the president has arrived in Hanoi in Vietnam, his second summit with Kim Jong-un as he continues to try to denuclearize North Korea, doing a great job with that. Everybody knows when you talk North Korea, there's only one guy to talk to. He's the absolute best, written books on it. You hear him on John Batchelor's show all the time talking about it. And now he's actually a frequent uh, guest on this show as well. He's our very, very good friend, the very intelligent Gordon Chang. Good morning, Gordon. How are you, pal? Hey, Gordon. I'm fine, and thank you so much for the kind words. It's all true. You're, uh, you're great, uh, especially when it comes to this stuff. You're as good as it gets. So let's get right to it, just uh, from a landscape type of thing here. How optimistic should Americans be that we're close to getting what we want because now we've got summit number two? Well, I don't know if we're close, but actually we're in a process. What President Trump is trying to do, and he laid it out at the Ottawa G7 just before the June summit last year. President Trump said, look, he's giving the North Koreans a one-time shot to do the right thing. And what Trump is trying to do is create a favorable environment so that Kim feels secure enough to give up his weapons. So this is enticement, and obviously it's a long-term process. But we're not anywhere close to where we need to be at this time. Well, uh, the president has sort of lowered expectations. Maybe something happened. Maybe nothing will happen. But I understand, Gordon Chang, that the demand of unconditional denuclearization is really not on the table. It's actually a negotiating point. That's what's different from the last summit. Am I wrong about that? Yeah, no, you're not wrong. Um, you know, and clearly what President Trump is trying to do is to make the North Koreans friends. I think that he's trying to peel them away from the Chinese. And so, although, um, you know, the president talks about complete denuclearization or disarming, um, this is sort of being pushed back. And what we're seeing now are interim goals that they think are going to help get us to where we need to be, and that is disarming the North. There seems to be a... Um a difference in opinion, although Mike Pompeo says no. Jake Tapper asked Mike Pompeo yesterday on CNN if he really believes that there's a nuclear threat coming from North Korea. And Mike Pompeo, without any hesitation, Gordon said yes. And Jake Tapper said, well, hold on a second. The president doesn't seem to think that. And Mike Pompeo said, that's not true. That's not what he tells me. And, and why would the president be there in Vietnam if he thought, in fact, there was no real threat of a nuclear attack? So what do you think the truth really is? Well, I, I sort of side with uh, Secretary of State Pompeo, because the North Koreans are a threat. I mean, they do have nukes. They've got missiles. They've actually got a missile that can cover the entire American homeland. Um, we know because of that November 2017 detonation that they've got thermonuclear devices, not just atomic ones. And the only thing they haven't done is they haven't detonated a thermonuke in the atmosphere. Every country which has an arsenal has done that. Um, the North Koreans haven't, but I think that they have a credible uh, capability um, because we've shown they've got all the components. So if they wanted to, uh, Gordon, just to be clear, the uh, North Koreans could fire off a nuclear weapon and hit Seattle, for example? Or New York or Key West. Really? And we couldn't stop it? Um, we have uh, mid-course ground-based interceptors in California and Alaska. Um, they are somewhat reliable. Um, if the North Koreans shot only one missile, we probably could bring it down. Um, but, you know, nonetheless, the North Koreans are going to fire more than just one if they're going to start a war. Wow. I don't think they're going to do that, but nonetheless, um, you know, they can overwhelm our missile defenses. Well, that's, that's uh, kind of chilling. Now, listen, uh, uh, the president just arrived in uh, Hanoi, and as I said, uh, alluded to, I believe, it took him, uh, Kim, uh, it took little Kim over three days to get to uh, Hanoi by train, and some say that was symbolism. I mean, what was behind all that? He could have just flown there in, what, four hours? Well, he didn't want to fly because, first of all, his uh, airplanes are not that reliable. He's worried about assassination attempts, and so that's why the Kim family, when it uh, has the opportunity, will, fly, uh, will take that armored train that Stalin gave his grandfather, Kim Il-sung. Oh, interesting. Uh, it just, I mean, three days on a train. It yeah, just doesn't, doesn't seem... And, and, why, and why exactly, this may be an obvious question, but again, most of our listeners don't know all the ins and outs, right? All the inside baseball. What is so significant? Why exactly did President Trump and uh, Kim Jong pick Vietnam as the place for this second summit? That's a great question, and we don't know all oh. the answers. But, you know, from the U.S. perspective, there are two reasons uh, which are evident. One of them is we want to show that even though a country has been an enemy of the U.S., 
we can be friends. The other is that Vietnam is economically prosperous. We want to show North Korea a better future. The only problem with that second reason is that the Kim family for seven decades has purposefully kept its people poor so they couldn't resist Kim rule. So Kim Jong-un looks at prosperous China, he looks at prosperous Vietnam, and he says, I want none of that. And uh, not to mention prosperous South Korea, uh, the uh, most obvious, I guess, because, uh, well, whatever. Uh, listen, uh, Gordon Chang, I, I want to segue quickly to uh, China. The president is, uh, he postponed putting on tariffs uh, against the Chinese, but the Chinese economy has been hurting as of late. We've been booming. I mean, what's happening with this uh, the trade war? Well, uh, there's probably going to be a settlement. Um, there's going to be an agreement. Uh, yesterday, President Trump talked about a signing summit with Xi Jinping, the Chinese ruler. That could occur next month at Mar-a-Lago. Um, and there's a lot of issues to still be resolved. But nonetheless, it's going towards some sort of agreement. Let me ask you about, uh, I'm going to keep moving countries like Bernie just did. He went to China. We started with North Korea. Let's, uh, let's move to Iran. Their foreign minister just quit. Now, we know this deal. Trump basically ripped it up. It was a terrible deal put together by John Kerry. But the foreign minister in Iran quitting today, Gordon Chang, or yesterday, what does that mean uh, for us moving forward in some type of negotiations with Iran? Yeah, I, I don't know if we're actually going to have deep negotiations with Iran. What we're trying to do is pressure them into submission. And I think the Trump policy is a much better one than um, the Obama one. You know, th we like to think that we can talk bad leaders into good d results. Um, that's not very true, unfortunately. Right, right. So, you get the feeling that maybe the foreign minister quit because with this administration, he probably felt like he was not going to be able to get anything done on the plus side for his country, maybe. Well, sure, yeah, and, and clearly the Ayatollahs are unrepentant. On the way out, Gordon Changa, who we can ask about anything, and anything. he can just roll with it. Uh, the handicap, the odds, do you think maybe something was baked in the cake in this North Korean deal uh, meeting? I mean, the president flew for 24 hours. I don't think he's going to fly that distance if they didn't already have something uh, in the can. And he, uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I think you're right. Um, I, I think there's probably going to be some sort of concessions on both sides. Uh, nothing really that meaningful because we're still at a pretty early stage. Um, but I don't really see the North Koreans doing what we need them to do, at least right not now, because uh, the Trump administration has relie relieved a lot of pressure on them. Kim Jong-un is not reciprocating gestures of friendship. Trump's going to have to go back to really enforcing sanctions so that the regime is starved of cash. It is 9.35 p.m. in Hanoi, Vietnam, where President Trump landed just moments ago for his second summit with Kim Jong-un in attempts to denuclearize North Korea. You're a great guest. You know that. We love having you, Gordon. Thank you so much for the info today, and have a great day. Oh, well, thank you so much, Bernie and Sid. You got it, Always pal. a pleasure, Gordon yep. Chang. The, the great Gordon Chang. On the Bernie and Sid Show. We're coming right back. Bernie and Sid in the morning.